Hello and welcome back. Today, I'm showing you how I customize my guitar's rear cavity cover, or back plate, whatever you want to call it, and how you can turn pretty much any flat object similar to these into a 3D model with a simple photo. So let's jump right into it. First things first, if you're doing a guitar cavity cover, pick the one you want to customize. I've chosen the first Schecter I ever bought. This is a 2006 C1 Blackjack that I got from a guy on Craigslist back in 2007, and it was still brand new. It even had the tag still on it. He was only asking $250, which was well under the MSRP, and is still under what you can typically find it going for used today, if you can find one, that is. This guitar originally came with a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. I've since switched over to the Keith Marrow Signature Fishman set. I also swapped the stock Grover tuners out for a set of hip shot locking tuners. Okay, that's enough about this beauty. Moving along, what you're going to want to do is lay this cover flat on something white. You can use a sheet of paper, or in my case, my desk is white, so I just laid it there. Then you're going to hold a camera as flat as possible above it and snap a picture. Now open this picture in Photoshop or one of the free alternatives like GIMP. I used Photoshop, so my instructions will be with Photoshop. Once in Photoshop, select a cover. I like to turn the smoothness up a bit just to remove any jagged edges. Then press Ctrl J to make it a new layer. After you've done that, hide the background image and save it as a JPEG. Even though most backplates are black, in the off chance that your cover is colored something else, you'll want to follow all the same steps that I've mentioned, but once you've made the cover into a new layer, add another new layer and make a brush about the size of the screw holes and change the color to white. Now, dot each of the screw holes, then go back to your layer with the cover and make sure it is selected. Change the brush color to black and paint it black. Then merge the two layers and save it as a JPEG, and there you go. Once you have your JPEG, come over to this website and convert it into an SVG. The link will be in the description. I have a whole other video explaining how to do this with almost any image that I will also link down in the description. Once that's downloaded, go over to Tinkercad and import the SVG. It will probably be too big, just shrink it down to something small enough to work with and we'll go more in depth on the size once it's loaded in the Tinkercad. Alright, so the first thing I did was find the longest straight edge and try to make it as straight as possible on the grid here in Tinkercad. I found that by moving it 0.2 millimeters at a time, I can get pretty close. And now that it's lined up, I'll go to my actual cover and measure from that same flat edge to the top of the highest peak on the other side. Right here I got 74.3 millimeters, so I'll go back into Tinkercad, hold the shift key on my keyboard, and grab one corner of the scaling tool, then I will type 74.3 millimeters here, and the rest of the model will automatically scale. The thickness of my cover is 2.5 millimeters, so I'll change that. Now you could print it like this and it should work, but if you want, you can grab this paraboloid tool, turn it over and align it to the holes, pull it up some so that you're not going too far through the cover, and group it. This leaves you with a nice countersink look and assures the screws will sit flush. And that's it. You can print it out in any color you want. 
So you could finish right there and be happy with that. Or you could take it a few steps further like I have here and really customize it. I'll be using the Z-Hop feature to add in the Schecter logo, but you could literally come up with any design you want to put on it. I'll leave a link in the description to a video where I go over in depth the Z-Hop feature because it's a lot to explain and this video would be way too long. You'll notice I've also done away with the three screw holes and I made two pockets where I can glue in these tiny magnets I have instead, making this a quick to remove and replace magnetic cavity cover. Keep in mind that if you want to make yours magnetic, there is a slight modification that you will have to make to the guitar. I took a drill bit about the size of the head of the screws that originally held the cover on and drilled about two to three millimeters into the existing screw holes on the guitar. This is going to make the screws countersink so the heads will sit flush with the wood. These are obviously what the magnets will grab onto. Alright, so let's get this printed out. I used 30% infill for strength, but you can choose whatever you like. I also printed this on the glass side of my bed so that it would come out nice and smooth. Now I did originally print this in the color scheme I had on Tinkercad. But as it turns out, there must have been dust on my white filament because it's embedded in the print and it makes this look really dirty. However, it was enough for me to stick on the guitar and figure out that I didn't really like the colors. So I reversed them and started to print over. Here's where things took a turn. I ended up having to reprint this backplate four more times until it came out right. For some reason, the first two times the PLA was warping and pulling off the bed. I haven't had this issue before with the warpings, and it was only happening with the black PLA. So I'm assuming that since this particular black PLA spool is older than dirt, that's likely contributing to the problem. Uh, I'm not positive, but none of the other colors I printed with had this issue, so that's my best guess. Anyway, I cleaned the glass over and over until I finally got it to stick, but on that attempt, the white had bled into the black, making it look gray and washed out. So, frustrated, I decided to put this aside for a day or two and come back to it later. I ended up starting over and adding a brim to the print to hopefully hold it down, and that worked out pretty well, finally. Lastly, I glued the magnets in and grabbed some foil tape to use for shielding. And that was it. This turned out so well, I decided to go ahead and customize my truss rod cover too, using the same steps from earlier. And then just for sheets and giggles, I did the back plates on my Schecter KM6 and my Charvel San Dimas Pro Mod too. And they also turned out pretty good. All right, that's all I've got for you today. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. Links will be in the description. I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever. Yeah.